30 Live, everybody. Welcome. It's Friday afternoon. We are uh, in an unusual place. Well, no, not unusual. Our I mean, we used home. to be here. Yeah, this All is time. our first home. This right. is the first home. We are in the Ram, right? That's where we are. Yep. Uh, I'm drinking a, a butt face. I am Pete Wright, drinking a butt face. And I'm sitting here with Mr. Jamie Whitley. Hello, James. And uh, uh, it's good to see you. I, have, I haven't seen you in I know. court ever. Seen yeah, you and, uh, and that's the voice of Mary Bradbury Jones. Yes. Where Looking have you guys what? been? Okay. Uh, how did you? What did you say to me when I walked in the room? You're freaking huge. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, it was lovely. But Mary yeah, is no, Mary no, is yeah, pregnant, and so I haven't now. seen her in so long <laughs> that she just God, is like four weeks, five weeks. It's uh, been maybe yeah. longer. Yeah. You were and on suddenly you just, for like three, and I wasn't here last week. Man, it's like you were just you know. Well, that's right because we did all those shows without you. Yeah. yeah. Which were fabulous shows, by the way. I've listened to them. They, they were good shows. Well. Yeah. They were good shows. They yeah. were definitely good shows. And and then last week I was out and you were there. Yeah. yeah, so it was me and Shane. I thought you guys I, were boycotting me. Yeah, no, yeah. no. And, and you had the guy in, uh, with the uh, brain. Frank, Frank's brain. Yeah, yes. that was actually, that was a good episode. It was, was interesting. It's an interesting, interesting. talk. I'm telling you, the pictures, I need to post more pictures because the of, the pictures of that of, of the process, like you see the picture on the website, right, is him with the frame on his head. Right. Yeah. Well, that was that's the device that they drill, they, they screw to his skull, and it's the thing where they screw it so tight that it's it's like touching bone. You know? Did he have like little holes in his? Yeah, head? he did. He has little holes in his head in four places. And you can see him like yeah. in his forehead. Yes. Wow. Yes. Can he screw a little horn in or something? Yeah, I told him he should do that. Yeah. He wouldn't. He is yeah. he is really big on the on the uh, ADA superhero kick right now. I think he's. I think the thing is diluted him, but now he's got this list of superhero names that he could change his name to and. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Screw in attachments. And yeah, stuff in his little, head. that's right. He could do like a little satellite dish. Yeah, on one, exactly. Maybe a laser pointer on the <laughs> other. <like> a fork. <laughs> he could screw in like little magnifying glass yeah. attachments that yeah, swing like down over his eyes. eyes. Yeah, like Aww. a targeting thing. That was his iPhone. so cool. Okay, seriously. He could screw in an iPhone attachment that <laughs> right. swings down like this. Huh? Just like the Borg, man. Just oh, like the Borg. Exactly oh, my goodness. The Borg are known to be real Apple people. They love the iPhone. Uh, we have a guest today. This is actually a repeat guest. Yes, it is. Mary, would you do the honors, please? This We have Philip Jones back with us today. Phil, it has been too long. Thanks for having me back. We are so glad to have you back. Last here. time you were on, you talked about really gross stuff. Yep. And uh, what are we gonna? What are you gonna bring to us today? Well, I guess we're gonna kick around evolution a little bit. Excellent. And, uh, see what everybody hey, thinks. Cool. Oh, last time we talked about the hunter virus, right? That yes. was right. Yeah, you're That's still right. working on that though. I am. Mean? I'm uh, trying to wrap that up. Getting close. But, uh, what do you do after hunter virus? I mean, how, what's the sequel to that? <laughs> Well, uh, you know, if I stay in that line of research in terms of an academia, then uh, I'll continue to extrapolate on what I've already done. Yeah. So, you know, that could turn into a lifelong uh, project, essentially. Wow. Uh, oh, so. extrapolate. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. So, <laughs> you, never mind. What? You don't extrapolate anything. I just not what I thought he said. <laughs> I was just, like, <laughs> use the word. I'm like, what? I'm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Never mind. Anyway, well, it is great to have you here with us, Bill. This is fantastic. Thank you. Glad to be here. And, uh, uh, so let's uh, let's kick it off with the news. We're missing Shane today. Oh yeah, we, we are missing Shane. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Do a, a cross. We're missing Shane. He's on vacation, doing some vacation y type thing, hanging out with friends this weekend and next week. We're gonna miss him next. Yeah, week. I think he like. To Seattle this weekend. And I thought he was like a joined a monk weekend. group or something for a week and was gonna meditate and not drink beer and stuff. It's really. <laughs> Try to get in to know his inner yeah. self. I, I think, it, I think and... possibly the exact opposite is what's going yes, on exactly. right now. In the oh, I'm, I'm right. sure he's had many at this point already. Oh, many beers. Man. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy can, uh, he can hold his own. Well, you know, the eating, he's the eating competition uh, loser, actually. That's what I heard. But... I heard that in the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what were they eating? Hot dogs? Watermelon. watermelon. It was a watermelon eating competition. Oh, Anyways, okay. he went down in, in flames, is what I heard. But, uh, Who won that? Some, somebody small, some somebody dude. really yeah. surprising. It's always, it's really always small one. we learned about that. Yeah, it's the skinny muscular dudes mm -hmm. that uh, that actually can put it away. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. the thing that blew me away. Was the guy who in oh. a it was like a minute and forty seven oh. seconds, six and a half pounds of beans. Beans. Oh. oh. First of all, why? Just, I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, hot dog. Okay, watermelon, beans, beans. Oh. Yikes. No, I wouldn't do that. The only things I would eat competitively are like Rice Krispies, <laughs> cotton candy. I'm the Rice uh, Krispie champion. 
you have to take shots of insulin for the next two days. Exactly. <laughs> well, cotton candy would be worse. Yeah, that's um, right. It's just pure sugar. Yeah. Okay, so we got to do the news before yes, our do. food gets here. Headline news. What do we, what have, we have going on this week? What do we have? What do you guys want to start with? Just, just start. You start. Well, we were... Um, how about the whole Michael Vick dogfight? Oh, That's my a good God. good place to start. Michael hey, Vick. So I saw a shirt on the internet today. Neuter Michael Vick. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to get myself one. So I, had this, I had this conversation with these guys who were coming up with more like bumper stickers. Yeah. I'm a Michael Vick entrepreneur with Michael Vick in quotes, you know? <laughs> Man, that guy, his career is so done. Oh, it's over. Uh, it's over. I saw that well, Nike and, and others, no, whatever. Nike's done anything no, they pulled happened. it just today. We, as we were in the Ram, and I was oh, looking really? at the TV, they okay. just said announced they that they pulled his sponsor. pulled his merchandise and stuff. I well, assume so they're canceling what, his contract. For those who haven't heard, I, I assume oh, everybody has not? heard that yeah. Michael Vick, he it's was like everywhere. He, they go and into his house and found sixty dogs. I think six of them were dead. Uh, that he had been in, involved in at, at a very high level, at a very... Uh, uh, well, I understand he wasn't really living there or anything, so I think his argument is, why well, I didn't know what was going on at the house. It was my sure. cousins and all that kind of stuff. But, but aren't there uh, witnesses? The problem was the yeah, witnesses yeah, yeah. who right. witnessed him actually uh, actually killing dogs that, right. that were losing or were, uh, were not pulling their weight or were injured. Yeah, and they found all kinds of whatever they use for dog fighting and, and evidently they were betting on it and stuff. And yeah. I mean, that's just horrible. I mean... How do you find such a big crowd of people to come bet on dog fighting? I don't know. It was like in Arkansas or something. So obviously must be some underground... Louisiana? No, I have no comment on that. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. Atlanta. I yeah, I, yeah, is. exactly. Uh, I, I don't know, but I... First of all, that's just disgusting. I don't know why you'd want to... Yeah. I don't either. I mean, well, on. I mean, is it uh, though? There are the, there are those who say you know it's the same thing as bullfighting. Uh, it's the same thing as cockfighting in Mexico. Bullfighting in Spain. Uh, you know, how how is it different? Because they're pets. Be well, it's because in pets. in Asia yeah. they eat them, right? They yeah. eat dogs. So how is that? I think because you are. I'm just throwing it out there. No, it's a good point. I think because you are purposely. Uh, putting them in a position to mutilate each other and and uh, I mean, do bulls harm each fight other. To the death? I don't know. I didn't. Uh, well, no, the, no, bulls don't actually fight each but other. But the bull oh. There's actually yeah. a lot of people that have problems with bullfighting and yeah. yeah. cockfighting as well. Yeah, yeah. That's what's well, cockfighting is illegal. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But, so, but you know, when you put yourself, you don't in, have to separate them. from the other sort of perspective. I, I have I have a problem with bullfighting and cockfighting. I, I mostly that I wouldn't want to waste my money on it, but. You know, yeah. I, I'm a dog guy. I have dogs as pets. I think that's the biggest problem is you can you can imagine your dog. Yeah. And you're like, why? Why would anybody do that? You can that? identify with it. Yeah. Uh, now, my brother has a little dog that maybe I wouldn't mind putting in there. Uh, <laughs> just so the dog wouldn't come back out. But that, that's, a, that's kind of a Okay, I, we had uh, the, the most annoying dog that used to live across the street when I was a kid. They, they installed one of those, those radio... Th Fences, yeah. you know, yeah. invisible fence yeah. with a collar. Stand in our driveway, call the dog. Dog comes trotting down the road. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just <laughs> rotten, just rotten. But every time you call the dog, it would come. come. <laughs> There's a special place in hell for you. For yeah, me. I think there is. <laughs> every day gonna, since then has been some sort of retribution yeah. for that. You're going to be clawed by dogs <laughs> in hell for the rest of your life. Are you kidding? Life. They're going to strap me, cover my yeah, body right. with radio collars. You. They're going to hold out food or beer here, on the other side. Here. You're like, yeah! Here, it's a popcorn yeah, shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Vick's career is done. It is over. Do you think it should have the should be having the press that it's having, despite everything else going on? Okay, this is the Paris Hilton effect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like, it's it's just, it's a non-stop. Non-stop. It, it's unfortunately what most of our news has become. Well, it's just infotainment this, is what our news Yeah, is. it's sensationalism. And, and, you know, it is like when Ferris Hilton gets out of jail or goes to jail, there's 50,000 people there in pictures and helicopters. And, like, oh, yeah. my God. Did you, did you catch the uh, MSNBC story about Paris Hilton? This was, this was a big, oh, no. big one where the, uh, the reporter, well, I, I should put the link in the show notes. There's a reporter, the video's on YouTube. 
the reporter is handed a story that she's meant to read, and she looks down at it. She finds out that it's Paris Hilton, and she refuses to read it, and goes to the point where she's like, it has to like crumple it up and eventually burn it on the air because she says, "This is not news. I refuse to read this oh, on wow. the air." Oh my God, and they're I'm saying, impressed. "No, read the story. Read the story. It's all on the air." Does she still have a job? I'm impressed. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> really. I wow. Think so. wow. That's it amazing. was it was unbelievably cool. Yes, that's uh, there, good to hear. You know, there's a thing, though. And I, I spent, when I was on vacation, I spent the week uh, uh, doing a, um, uh, out at uh, in Chautauqua, the Chautauqua Institution. And the week that I was, the two weeks I was there, the first week, it was on the media. And so every day we had lectures uh, uh, from people, pundits in the, in the industry. You know, we had John Harwood, who's a CNBC and Washington Post reporter. We had uh, David Weston, who's the president of ABC News. Uh, wow. We had um, uh, Dave Marash, who's the uh, anchor for Al Jazeera English, spent 15 years working for Ted Koppel on Nightline. That's cool. Uh, we had Juan Williams from NPR uh, and Ariana Huffington uh, oh, yeah. from the Huffington Post. Okay, yeah. Now, these guys, they are all across the spectrum in terms of political bent. Right. And, and I think they had, some, they had some very consistent messages. The first one was, you know what? We don't get it right every time. We fail we fa when we fail, it tends to be catastrophic. You know, it's weapons of mass destruction, destruction right? It's the build-up to the war. It's Paris Hilton, whatever it is. But in general, the media is out there doing their best, and they are not. That there is not a general plan, uh, a, a, like a ratings scheme out there to try and and uh, and bamboozle the the American public. But when they when you they were all asked where do you go for your news you know David Weston Ariana Huffington Juan Williams all these mainstream media personalities where do you go for your news and they all said consistently the only institution that gets it right to their standard NPR they always turn that on in the morning that's where they get their news and these the one guys, that's not out to make a profit yeah they're they're definitely driven. not profit driven although yeah. but they're they in, come under they're in business to stay well, alive that's true. and. Well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, Bush has actually put in place quite a few of the administration of NPR who are actually, political pundits just, and who are yeah, alike. I think they just tried to uh, cut the funding for NPR and that yeah. got yeah. Uh, oh. reinstated by uh, Congress. I think, well, yeah. which, and thank God, but you know, the yeah. bottom line of that one is that, it, you know, NPR's funding has fallen, you know, every oh, yeah. year catastrophically, mm -hmm. uh, year over year over year, and now it's down to some... For, for, uh, you know, most sta most affiliate stations are down to receiving under 10% of federal funding yeah. of public broadcasting. Yeah. But it just underscores the import of keeping that alive, of public. keeping oh, public, yeah, rate, public broadcasting alive. Right. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Okay, who's next? Uh, that was Michael Vick. iPhone, how do you like your iPhone? I still love my iPhone. You still love it? It's all sex. Yeah. It is fantastic. It's the best phone I've ever had. But I have a related story. Are you ready for my related story? Yes. Yeah, yeah. do tell. I, when I got my iPhone, I replaced, I was replacing two devices. My Arctic White Trio 680, which I loved very much. We were at a very close relationship. It was hard to break up with my Trio. <laughs> and my, uh, my 60 gigabyte uh, iPod video, which I sold both on eBay. Uh, so my Trio, I sold it to this person uh, on eBay. I won't say her full name, but her last name, her first name is Deborah. Started sending me these emails, very nice emails. She was a local person in Portland saying, I'd like to buy the, the, uh, your trio. She won the auction and she paid me with an e check. And that cleared. The money went into my account. I withdrew the money out of my PayPal account and put it in my bank. And then I get this email saying, hey, by the way, would you ship it as a gift to my friend Alex or my cousin Alex in the Ukraine? I already had the money, right? right. So I'm thinking, well, all right, I'll ship it wherever you want. Right. Okay, don't do that. That's a mistake. It wasn't her asking it to be shipped? No, it was not her even asking it to be shipped. It was, I got word yesterday morning, I got a call or an email from PayPal saying the money that you got here, the, like it was like 330 bucks. We've just taken it and put it back on this person's credit card because it was a stolen credit card. The person uh, just defrauded you and because you didn't ship your merchandise to a verified PayPal address, you're not protected. You shipped it to the Ukraine. 
And so we can't get your merchandise back, you can't get your money back, you're, it's a loss. So this is what she says, the poor pay, I let her have it, I feel bad. So to, to, to the PayPal gal, if you're listening, I'm so sorry. I completely let her have it, but she says to me, she says this, the only way you can get your merchandise back, sir, is maybe if you can work out an arrangement with the buyer uh, to actually send your merchandise back to you. Yeah, right. They used a stolen credit card. Yeah. How likely do you think it is that they're going to work with me? To get Send I was the Ukrainian boned. police to the address. Oh my God, I was <laughs> completely boned on it. And you know, it's it's more. I, I can get over the 300 bucks. I'll I'll sell more stuff, and I'll I, that I'll figure out. But I'm just so boned because I'm one of those guys that people look at about. You know, I'm a technical guy. I usually don't fall for that stuff. And I totally fell for it. I should not have done it. Oh my! Lessons God. learned. That very I'll big, tell yeah. you, you know, it's a sting. It is a sting. So uh, we've it, we have coined the uh, the Ukrainian uh, the Arctic fox Arctic. around my family. I got taken by the Arctic fox. It, it makes it feel better if I feel like I've been taken by a real criminal. Right. <laughs> you know, a real hardened criminal is using my phone. <laughs> oh, anyway. so sorry, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, that sucks. It stinks. Even it happens to. It, it, happens, it can happen to anyone. That's the trick, right? Yep. So. Interesting. But the iPhone makes up for all of the pain. I highly recommend it to anyone out there. Anyone out there, period. It's oh, awesome. I must admit, playing, it's very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. What so, else do we have? You know, it was Harry Potter uh, mania. We haven't talked about oh, yeah. Harry I, I Potter. I saw that. Oh, I saw the movie. Yeah. And the book? The book. No, the final book. Yeah, yeah, final book. I don't Which know what I guess happened. We Nobody tell me say anything. anything. Yeah, oh, I mean, okay. I, I looked up on the web, I know what happened, and I was good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it's funny because there'd be lots it. of people where I'd ask, you know, so does Harry die? And like, I'm not telling. You know what's really funny, though, is the people I saw on the web were saying, You ruined it for me, you told me the ending. Like, you dumbass, don't read it if you right. want to know. If you don't want to know. I mean, well, nobody was... ruined it for you, you ruined it for you because yeah. you decided to read it. But see, that's the problem, is that now, as again, as a technical person, I can't go on the web anymore. Because somewhere, somebody's going to tell me what happened. Until I finish the book. About 300 pages into it, i got to finish it, and then I'll be okay. Have you read all the other ones? Oh, yeah. Huh. It's a family thing. Wow. Cool. I didn't know you had a crush on Hermione and all that. That's Are cool. you kidding? She's yeah. almost legal. Yeah. No. <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> that's awful. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I, had some, off, I had some students in a class the other day. I think she's legal. Day. Isn't she probably almost 21? I don't know. No. He's in about the, to turn 21, is isn't he? Is an 18 legal, legal Oh, no, is yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's what I meant. She's legal. Or is it 18? Well, we were seeing where so, he's going to get his right? money once he turns a certain is? age. What is that? Was he it 18? Look 18. Oh, okay, never mind. They're just now turning 18. Michael Jackson will start calling him up. Are you kidding? This is when Michael Jackson old. stops calling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That's oh, terrible, that too. Oh, that is awful. Yeah, man, you're cut off, dude. Yeah. Ah. That's butt face. All right, what else, what else you got? Well, we were talking a little bit before uh, the show started about the whole story that's come out about Pat Tillman. And now oh, the speculation that he was murdered by uh, Man, that is horses. horrible. That must have just come out today, because I haven't seen that. Actually, no, it came out yesterday. A, a couple days ago. It was on... Uh, Wow. Keith, no, it was on Keith Olbermann last night. It's a news breaking story. So. I bet he's on that like a piranha, so, Olbermann. Yeah, you know, because he. Something's not right about that whole thing. On his Just, ESPN show. I mean, all the on. stuff that went on surrounding his death. And, well, like, it was, they were obviously hiding, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah so pretty so clear. tell the story. What, what actually was the story? Well, you mean, and to why they think he's been murdered? Well, a couple things. One, well, first of all, they say that there's video, apparently. Like, of some different stuff that people have watched and there is no evidence of the whole argument of friendly fire so like nobody else got shot no equipment got shot I mean you know yeah. nothing and then the second thing is he had three um, bullet holes all at pretty close range together in his forehead and then ballistics or whatever would reveal that it could only have happened I don't know how what what was it, 10 feet away? Or 10 something? yards. 10 yards 10 away. Yards, yeah. um, and now, then, somewhere, the AP has gotten a hold of emails from military army lawyers congratulating themselves that they avoided a criminal investigation. Although that could be that. 
you would want to congratulate yourself for avoiding that. That's their job. So, well, I mean, they may not. But I don't. Either. I mean, I think that they. I mean, they so got it covered up. If it's been covered up, over. you it's probably so. even covered up from the lawyers as well. I mean, that's a that's a possibility. Well, and what what General Clark was saying on Keith Olbermann last night was for this to have happened, this is way this is very high up in the military to have made this call. Yeah, the decision to go forward with the cover up had to have come from, from like the Pentagon or higher. Right. Yeah. So. Well, they also anyway. pulled a star from the general that was they involved did. Yeah. the initial cover-up. Yeah, who claimed he couldn't remember anything. Yeah. There's he's, a lot. It's like Gonzalez, right? <laughs> Gonzalez can't remember a lot Nobody of stuff. Can. Yeah, <laughs> He only wrote emails about it, stuff, but he really can't luggage. remember. You know, oh, that emergency yeah. meeting? I don't remember anything about the cookies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Gonzalez <laughs> is in trouble, too, right? I mean, what? Yeah, what's Gonzalez the, what's is in going trouble, too. Now? Oh, yeah. Well, he got caught lying, basically. Yeah, about the whole firing of the... Of the uh, lawyers. Okay, that, seriously, took long enough. You know, give well, me a break. That's like they didn't see that the first time they deposed. I know, him. but they have to get where they have actually yeah. finally get them where there's enough. And what happened, I think, was was it? I know it was Mueller from FBI that was one of the first that started to his testimony revealed how much he had lied, and then um, the acting the what was that guy's name? That was the acting. Uh, Attorney General, when Ashcroft went, was oh, in the yeah. hospital under for his surgery, so oh, he passed, right. uh, you know, passed the reins to someone else, and they came there trying to get Ashcroft in his drug state fog to approve the illegal right. wiretapping. Right. Well, that's actually pretty smart strategically. So, anyway. Wait till he's on drugs. You know, but he was like, "No, this is the one in charge." You know, charge. Of Cheney anyway, was recently so. president of the United States, wasn't he? He was, and, he was, and you yeah. know, I was about to say we we are we could have been a very different place today <laughs> than we were. Man, I, there, and now Rove's gotten a subpoena, although they say Rove won't come. There's some weird shit going on. It's just not right. It's everything like lies and cover up, and if you didn't do anything wrong, then what do you have to cover up? You know the interesting thing? I don't think Bush is really smart enough or has enough control to really know what's going on. And and I, I think in a lot of ways, he, he hired a bunch of people, put them in charge, had no real oversight and et cetera, and they're off doing their own thing. And I don't think he really, I'm gonna guess he's- Well, and, and not to be completely crass about the degree, but that's really, I mean, in terms of the vernacular, that's the MBA, like, uh, that's the MBA response to management. You know, it's, it's a, establish a nice official hierarchy and if the world were in order, it would work very well. But the world's not in order, and he's out of control, and it doesn't work as well. Yeah. Well, and, and Bush is not really, he doesn't come across as a control freak, so I don't think he spends a lot of time looking at stuff, maybe like Clinton did or whatever. No, I mean, it's, it's Well, he definitely, up. I mean, it's known that he doesn't want to hear what, I mean, you don't tell him what he doesn't want to hear. Yeah. His whole team knows of that yeah. Yeah. about him. Yeah, it's uh, so. it's up. But that it's doesn't mean all in Iraq is bad. There actually has been, and you, you tease me about this because I send you a few news stories now and again oh. about provinces getting better. There was actually even a big article in this last week's Newsweek, which is generally a pretty liberal uh, <laughs> magazine, about uh, how <laughs> certain provinces are getting a little better. <laughs> it is pretty liberal. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Oh. All right. Uh, whatever, James. <laughs> There are some provinces that are getting better. I think some of the Iraqis are getting uh, a little tired of uh, the violence that is going on and stepping up to the plate. You think they're, you think they're getting tired of it? I'm sure they're that's getting your, tired of it. That's, that's they were bitch. actually were talking about how. Uh, <laughs> listen, they were talking about. In, you think they've been passive all the rest of this uh, time? No, they were talking about in certain provinces where where some of the local tribal elders have encouraged people to sign up for the police and those sorts of things. And so the police numbers are going up, the, number, the violence, the number of bombings and different things has dropped dramatically, uh, almost to the point of zero in certain According places. According to whom? Right, I that was just According to Newsweek? That was just this week's Newsweek. News news this week's Newsweek. Hey, that's all right, man. I, you know, I, I mean, maybe Newsweek isn't right. I don't know. It'd I mean, be interesting to see if there's a correlation between where the U.S. troops aren't and where the, the level of violence is, that because goes. because they seem to be seeking us out and in trying oh, to engage absolutely. us. So if we're not in certain provinces and that kind of thing, then violence is going to go down in those areas. And Could meanwhile, be. it goes up in those others where we're. I don't know. It was you know, uh, Anbar wielding our, our fist. Talks about the going from roughly 500 attacks a week to barely a third of that. Uh, 
weapons cache discoveries is coming from the Iraqis is up 190 uh, percent. Local police force that could only muster 20 recruits a year ago, with local sheiks encouraging tribe members to sign up, it's at 8,000. I mean, that's great. Where is the Anbar problem? Is that south where the Brits were at the majority uh, of the time? It says there's nearly 6,000 U.S. troops in that in that province, but. It says townspeople are losing. Or is that up by the Kurds? See, it also depends on. Yeah, it's on not even area. actually in Iraq. It's yeah, well, yeah, it really, is, it's in. Uh, <laughs> it's in I Arkansas. think it's Western Iraq. But, but anyways, I'm not I, sure. I, 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 I think when when there is good news like this, we have to talk about it, and Sir, it is well, interesting. You, know, you guys, can, right. you guys can tease me about Newsweek. I you don't can want tell it. me I'm a right wing <laughs> commie, but by God, it's right here in, in writing, and I'm standing by it. Well, you're not a commie. Did you hear about Ray Hickey? Who's uh, what is he? Somewhere down in Southern Oregon, basically saying that that all Democrats are communists. And, and, yeah. <laughs> who's Ray Hickey? And He's why do some we care? Republican guy <laughs> in the South, South, of Southern Oregon. All Democrats are commies. Yeah, it's not true. They're all yeah. socialists. So. That's right. <laughs> That's the point, Ray. <laughs> um, Communism is not socialism. That where the sun don't shine. That's right, Ray. <laughs> okay. Um, so, The Simpsons. Yes. Right? So, The Simpsons, the movie, after 18 years of uh, being wow. a show, That's 18, amazing. going into its 19th season, wow. movie opens today, and of course, they have decorated the. Uh, uh, many 7-Eleven stores around the country as Quickie Marks with, with, nice. with real like Quickie Mark products, slushies instead of Slurpees and all that. Enough beer. And there has been really quite a controversy because they uh, there's a Springfield, Vermont, and there was a, comp a contest between who, where is the home of, you know, of the Simpsons. And Springfield, Vermont won the contest. And so now there's this all this hubbub about how Springfield, Vermont, is the home of the Simpsons, and everybody thinks it's they're, they're the best, and, and uh, the internet is a buzz. I with thought it Simpsons was all fans. about that they just won the bid to have the um, premiere. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. That oh. was the prize. They yeah, and it was like an online vote thing, yeah. so it's not like it was a real scientific oh. inquiry or no, anything no, no. like Especially that. Because <laughs> when you when you do that and you look at the references, and this is what I found, I wanted to get. I was trying to find an, a Simpsons expert to talk to today about this because I found this guy who wrote a... There are a lot of them, and they all write anonymously on the Internet. Because no one wants to admit that they follow and write about the Simpsons. What do you do for a living? Wow. But so if you look at it... and you look at the journalist for the Simpsons. <laughs> if you look at the references, right, of the Simpsons in the movie, they, they all come from, uh, from Oregon, of course, and Matt Groening is from... Uh, mm -hmm. Oregon, and he said in a recent quote, Springfield or Oregon really is, uh, in in my mind, is really the home of the Simpsons. Springfield or, or maybe Beaverton, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is funny to those of us who actually up. live in Beaverton. Right? That's where he grew up. Yeah, and the addresses yeah. in the show, uh, one of the homes of, of Snake. Uh, was shown as a child is living at at this address in Beaverton, Oregon, that that is fairly unmistakable. Right. And so, well, and we have you know characters were named after street names of Portland. Yeah. Twilliger and Lovejoy. Joy. Flanders. 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 Yeah. Any Flan Northeast Flanders is always uh, you know tagged as Ned Flanders. Yeah, so that's the big thing. I haven't seen the movie yet, but uh, I hear... I but I definitely want to see it. Oh, I definitely want to see it. And the trailers President look really funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the trailers look great, but the uh, early reviews come in saying, you know, like many TV shows gone movies, it's kind of uninspired. And... Right, but I mean, eh, maybe it's those critics. critics that... Even the show's not what it used to be, so... Well, that's, that's what, what they're surprising. saying. Like, yeah. after about season eight, it sort of settled into a kind of a humdrum... What else are you going to do? I mean, right. really, what are you going to do new? It's kind yeah. of the same old stuff over and over. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Point. All right, that's all, all right. I had. Hey. Anything else from the Actually, politics, I have one last thing I, I yeah. forgot to tell you guys. I found this website the other day, and it's really fascinating to me. They've, they've, they're arguing for using computers to do districting in your state. And so rather than having politicians design it in such a way to keep them in like office. Tom yeah, well, all of them do. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. But Tom Delay is very famous for that. Yeah. Uh, having it done by computer so that it's all done mathematically and it's done by population segment and it's all 
unfair and unbiased. Who's writing the algorithm? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I, I sat down and looked at it and just, and they had done every state and just laid it out. And it's like, well, that makes sense. You got like four or five lines and it's all divided by population. You're like, all right, there you go. So they're encouraging people in their different states to uh, put together amendments like in Oregon we can do and whatnot. I think that would be a great idea to just get it out of the hands of politicians and just make it fair and unbiased. And and that way when, when people vote, they're actually making a vote for hopefully you know, the most popular in a way that makes sense rather than you're in this district so therefore it's going to lean this way and that's the way it always is and blah blah blah. It's just a total mess. Why are you looking at me yeah. weird? Because I don't, I, because I'm trying to, everybody at this table is like smarter than me about this stuff, but I'm trying to figure out why, uh, why that in itself would solve the problem of, uh, uh, of politicians getting elected into office because the way it works now, the way the districts are drawn up, they, they generally draw them around really weird boundaries in order to, in order to satisfy their population needs. Of voting, either Democrat or yeah. Republican, rather than just saying, let's separate our state into four quadrants based upon population and just let the chips fall where they may, Republican, Democrat, or, or in between. So by redistricting and drawing them out, you're essentially making yourself the incumbent more likely to get to, to stay to stay in office. So the idea becomes how do I stay in office yeah. versus how do I do things that are good or how do I make good arguments for my positions or rather whatever. than this little empire building system. Well, and, and that's why the turnover is so low in states. Yeah. I mean people say, well the democratic process works because I got voted in twelve times. No it didn't dude you got voted in because your whole district set up to keep you in. Yeah. I mean there's to, to beat you would take so much money that's right. just really never going to happen. Right. And, and so it's set up to maintain the status quo. And if you got rid of that, then things would become more competitive and better ideas, in, in my mind, would win. And, and that's the democratic process. Let the good ideas bubble up to the top and, and move forward. Yeah. So I'm all for it. I like it. This is cool. All right. You sold me. I buy right. it. I'll vote for it. All right. Somebody give me, give me a letter to write. With that and publicly financed campaigns where you couldn't we, buy yeah. votes, then there'd be a debt and other. Throw yeah. in the electoral college. And we'll yeah. Have it all oh, fixed. yeah. <laughs> Somebody put that on Will It Blend. Yeah. Well, in yeah. today's day and age of technology, it's why ridiculous. do you need the electoral yeah. college? Yeah. It doesn't ridiculous. make sense. And why it's not one day primary across the United States. Is yeah. Thing. Yeah. National but primary. It's the capability to do it. It's. You know, which is, I mean, it's starting, I think we'll be there eventually as all these states are fighting to get earlier and earlier in the... Yeah, and they're all on top of each other. They're going to have like, yeah. what do they call, or it's going to be like Tsunami Tuesday or yeah. something <laughs> like that, because there's like so many right after. It'll be interesting. Hey, so, despite all the global warming, this year's hurricane season is not as bad as it was predicted to be. That's good. Just saying, maybe that global warming crap's not quite as real as we thought it was. But anyways, <laughs> that's a different it. issue. <laughs> I knew that was that's coming. It. I was just but waiting yeah, for it. That, that hurricane season's a great body of evidence <laughs> for global climate. <laughs> yeah, but you have to understand, <laughs> two years ago, when there was all the hurricanes, everybody's like, oh my God, it's global warming, it's global warming, it's global warming. Well, now that we don't have it, my answer, okay. So, well, global, but I, if I remember correctly from what I've read, it's not saying that it necessarily will increase the amount of hurricanes. It, is, it can make the intensity of the hurricane stronger. Because the more warm right. water there is, the more they, they get. Yeah, it won't affect the number of hurricanes, just the intensity of I saw hurricanes. A, I saw a great piece the other day. Um, if you haven't watched Penn and Teller's bullshit, it's great. Great show. They, they went the implicit. Right? They, oh, we lost that a long time ago. <laughs> they uh, they interviewed uh, one of the founders of Greenpeace, who actually has left Greenpeace because he said it's been hijacked and made a, oh, into yeah. a political movement, and and he you know doesn't agree with. It. He was a very fascinating guy, very interesting. Why? Why, why? Is, he what that? why is it yeah, what, did he, what did he say? Well, his point was, for example, people will say, well, we shouldn't cut down trees and we're killing the forest and, you know, the, cre the trees weep and stuff when we kill them. It's like, dude, you have to, I mean, you have to live. And, and if you cut down trees and you plant them in return in a responsible fashion, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just, you, you, you take some down, you add some back, and you put policies together that make sense. But this whole thing about marching and beating drums and dancing around naked because you're tired of people cutting down trees, yet you're wearing cotton and all this stuff, he's like... It, it's, it's hypocrisy. And he left because he felt like it was getting hijacked by groups who had political agendas that missed the overall point. And I think it was right on. Phil, do trees weep? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Scientist's <laughs> view. <laughs> trees do not define weep. weeping. 
some yeah, of my over, work at home, over, I had to cut some roots, and they actually did well, have sap. some, uh, yeah, <laughs> some seepage from those over, root cuts. <laughs> Overzealous so. sap flow. <laughs> exactly. It could have been a tree crying. I don't know. Ow. Just... Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> you guys are horrible. Oh. All right, what else are we talking about? I think we're oh, talking about evolution. Let's, yeah, let's, let's talk start, about evolution. Yeah. Let's do Enough it. Enough of the banter. Phil bought a book. Yes, uh, he did. I did. Why don't you tell us about your book? Well, <laughs> to I be brought fair, this at Mary's it's not Phil's book. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that preface, Pete. <laughs> I brought this in Mary's behest because it's interesting at the very least. You know, I certainly don't want to throw darts at anyone in particular, but this is called uh, Life and How Did It Get Here by Evolution or by Creation. Cool. Sounds pretty uh, straightforward, like a pretty good little conversation and debate on the issue. Um, but this was given to me by a group of Jehovah's Witnesses who stopped by my house one day. It was nice of them. It was. Yeah. Um, they actually brought this by at another time. Um, they came by just to do the standard witness uh, program with right. me. And much to their amazement, I invited them inside. <laughs> <laughs> and Always a sat- giver. <clears throat> yes, <nice. laughs> So we sat down and talked for about an hour. And uh, of course, it. it it uh, got on to, to this conversation of creationism, intelligent design, and that kind of thing versus evolution and that sort of thing, which um, I dabble in a little bit. And uh, so they brought this textbook by to me uh, like a week later or something like that for my perusal. And, and they actually wanted, fe- I'll give them credit, they wanted my feedback on, on this book. That's cool. So uh, it was an interesting little uh, exchange. I, I saw actually that the Pope, not, what's his name, the new Pope? Is it? Arnold or I don't I don't remember. Idea. Pope Benedict? Is that it? Benedict. Oh, Benedict, yeah. 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 I always think of uh, poached eggs or whatever, eggs. And eggs Benedict. Eggs Benedict. That's how I sound like I remember his name. It's probably poached, doesn't poached, make, poached Benedict. <laughs> yeah, it probably doesn't make him very happy. But, uh, uh, he does uh, look a little poached. Yeah. Peter, Peter, he, uh, Peter. he came out uh, the other day saying that he thought the argument between creation and, you know, creationism and evolution was kind of stupid, that really the, the idea of, of Religion and, and evolution and science just go hand in hand, and he thought the whole debate was pretty crazy. I thought that was good of him. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Well, yeah. To me, I think that you know, people in in religion that that, that really tie to sort of uh, um, literalism, biblical literalism, and that kind of thing in terms of creation and you know the seven days and all of that um, get a little. They take it too personally when scientists talk about the lack of evidence for this and the body of evidence for that. Um, scientists don't have an agenda. At least 99% of them don't. You're always going to have a few French people in either argument that are going to just, you know, blow it for everybody else. But the vast majority of scientists pride themselves on objectivity. That is the crux and the core of what we do, uh, you know, and a testable theory. And so... When you get to the whole sort of creationism kind of, uh, of story, or, or uh, use the word story, but uh, that, that whole line of thinking, um, science just doesn't really touch it. Scientists aren't out to debunk the Bible or say that creationism isn't real or anything else. Scientists are out to find out what is there. What, what can we observe in, in our observable world with whatever, either our eyes or our hands or instruments that we can build to do the observation for us. Um, and and we're, we're just out to find out what we can observe, and, and we and we try objectively again to follow that evidence, that information. You know, so that leads me back to that point that that science is not out to prove creationism wrong, or to prove Christians wrong, or the Bible wrong, or anything else, or, or to prove on the bigger scale that there is no God. Phil, do you think that uh, that creationists are out to prove evolutionists wrong? Scientists Absolutely. Wrong? So they do have an agenda. Because they already have their answer, and they're working backwards from that answer to make the argument, to have a counter-argument to uh, evolutionists or other scientists or whatever that may be studying something you know, somewhat peripheral to that, that lends to that body of knowledge. Um, it goes back again to that objectivity that we try to maintain. Of course we're human, we're flawed, you know, some people are more objective than others. but. Um, the whole crux of that, the key of that is going into it with an open mind and just making the observations and then developing your, your conclusions from the from that data that you gather. gather. Well, and where they're incongruent, I think, is where people look at uh, 
and you know, there's a lot of religious texts out there, and look at them in terms of being very literal. It says, oh, well, the Earth must only be you know, 4,000 years old or whatever, and, and this is exactly what happened. And it's like, I mean, really, come on. I mean, if the science doesn't show you that, then don't take it so literal. Step back yeah. a little bit and use some critical thinking. And, and there's, it, doesn't mean it doesn't mean the story isn't relevant. It just means that it, maybe it didn't happen exactly word yeah. for word exactly. There are a lot of scientists out there that believe that, uh, you know, in terms of uh, going to, like, the Big Bang, that, uh, you know, the, the, the scientists that believe that, that God created the Big Bang and everything went on from there right. in the kind of the way that we have observed and right. found. Uh, from that point, and that's you not know, incongruent they, with with religious. It's really not. philosophy. Right? I mean, because you certainly couldn't expect someone, you know, two thousand, four thousand years ago to go to the Old Testament to, to really understand and be able right. to put into words, uh, uh, you know, a clear uh, explanation of, of those events. Right. So they didn't have any data at the time. Right, and they just didn't have an understanding of the way that things functioned. You know, they didn't have the observations that the data, the the hard data that we do have now. Um, you know, so. There's a lot of that out there. There's definitely a huge gradient of, you know, I, of people in this argument, from the, the strict evolutionists and atheists, you know, all the way to the, the strict biblical literalists like my family, who you know believe in the four thousand years and all of that and, and nothing how else. Do you, how do they? And, and this is interesting because I didn't know that was the way your family is. But how, how do they make that argument in the face of so much scientific data? So how do you? Yeah. How do you put your faith right there and, and not expand your view of things and say, well, maybe it's really not 4,000 years. Maybe it's, you know, 4 billion years, and that's okay. I mean, yeah. it doesn't and, matter. And that's, what the, that's what the data shows, you know, we're about 4.5 billion years See that? or so. That's smarter than I thought. But uh, just in, in my own experience and observation, this Southern Baptist not to have family that your I grew family up with. listen to this and then oh, they don't yeah, excommunicate anyway. you. I'm not worried about <laughs> that. <laughs> and they already know all this. <laughs> You're already going to hell, aren't you? But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, not, not to make it personal in any way, but m my mother seems to have this, this intrinsic ability to sort of uh, shut off and not hear what you're saying, look you square in the eye and nod her head, mm -hmm. and not actually listen to the words that are coming out of your mouth. Um, and so... It, I hate to make it that simplistic and trivial, right. almost, but but there's definitely uh, an aspect of that going on and occurring where you talk about how can they just how can they rectify this? Right. Some of them don't bother; they just shut it off and won't even go there. They well, just, maybe you, maybe can, the you can talk to them with rationale and reason and logic and data and everything else, and it makes no difference. Well, maybe the argument is, why just take it on faith? I mean, isn't that the fallback <laughs> position? Well, absolutely. Uh, that's I it. mean, that's, that's, and, that's their band-aid for everything. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not here to knock faith. Don't, don't get me wrong, because I, I, I have a, I, I think faith is very important. But you also have to say, all right, let's just take a look at it logically and figure out what we know and what we don't know. And that just seems to be the rational thing to do. That's why I don't understand the whole argument in some states about, well, we have to teach this other view, and we're going to put these little stickers on the books and all that. I'm like, what are you doing? Because yeah. isn't, but isn't What's it the heart? Doesn't what that show is there it, that deep down they're insecure in their views, which is so thus there's a desperate need to control what people are learning and hearing because of that deep seated, probably unrecognizable insecurity. Well, okay. I mean, See, I now know. I buy that even more, and I think it's I, oh, I, I think that's really the issue because whatever whatever I come back to, and I'm looking at this book right now, you know, and it's it's saying things like with a little picture of a monkey, it says. This monkey-like creature has been called one of our ancestors. No fossil evidence exists to support this claim. Patently false. Well, of course, well, they have a drawing of a monkey. So a, who knows what kind of a monkey, a monkey or thing yeah, that I, is? You know, yeah. who knows what it is? It's, but it's they, a furry biped. But the issue is when you come back to <laughs> when you come back to why do you put your faith in here? When you drill down to what that the answer to that question is, it's I have to believe there's more. I have to believe there's something else than this. And that gets to that question of insecurity, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, because you're rocking I, the very foundation they've based yeah, everything absolutely. on. Well, hold on. I believe there's more than this, okay? But that doesn't mean I don't believe in evolution. I mean, I, to me, they go hand in hand. You can't, you can't pull them apart, in my mind. Well, and that's the gray area. But people, but you don't write a book like this. Yeah, no. You're not at right? evangel evangelizing people and, no, and no, no, holding, no, no, holding no. tent revivals. I, again, I think that, <laughs> I think that faith, that religion, and science, in my mind, go hand in hand. 
and, and they, they fit very neatly together in a rational way. I was told growing up that the fossil record was put there by the devil specifically to fool us. Well, good job, devil. You go. <laughs> huh. Yeah? No, I mean... Wow. <laughs> you know what's really odd? I know, you can't follow that up with anything. Right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Like, things like... This is, this is one of those things that really, it really stunned me. Uh, this is a quote, a sidebar quote with no attribution whatsoever. Pigs remain pigs, and oak trees remain oak trees, generation after generation. So what? Does that address anything? No. Well, I think what they're trying to imply is, therefore, since pigs they're have saying stayed there's no pigs, change. there's yeah. been no change, thus right. evolution doesn't exist. You know, and if you get a long discussion about how they're, they're looking at a snapshot in time, and, you know, if you really start talking about geologic time and deep time, we have so little ability to fathom geologic time and what, you know, 3.8 billion years since what we, the latest evidence shows is about where life began to form on Earth. Earth is around 4.5, 1.6 billion years old, around 3.8 yeah, billion years ago we started life. I mean, so we can't fathom that. We How can't long begin that to. is? How long ago that was? Oh, yeah. I mean, because yeah. we look at things in 100-year snapshots. I mean, we can't... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, there are people that you know, spend their careers studying deep time and, and geologic time, and they still have a difficult time just wrapping their brain around it, and certainly even sort of getting it across to other people yeah. in conversation. I mean, you just, we just well, don't have a frame of reference for yeah. it. And we don't really need to, because according to this book, the, uh, the solar system is exactly like the atom. Therefore, there is a god, and we were all put here at once. I don't even like the These what? are all punchlines. Like, the atom. like they're all punchlines. There's some duality there, yeah, with uh, formation, you know, orbits versus, you know, planetary orbits I versus. I saw a great uh, article today that actually is starting to argue that there's no such thing as time, and and there's and and one of the things they're trying to figure out is how come time always moves forward, and, and how come that's the way we always measure it, and and you know and. It's very fascinating that maybe it's not this mathematical thing we think it is. And I just read something associating time with parallel universes that are actually, each universe is in itself a, a, a snippet of time, so to speak, as we right. define it. Right. And it's not really time, we move from one universe to the next. Right, yeah. In quantum mechanics, that, quantum theory and that kind of thing. See, that's what's really cool. But again, I don't think any of that disproves in any way anybody's religious belief. I, I think they go hand in hand. But I, I don't understand people's absolute view of, all right, it was 4,000 years and that's the way it is, and, and the devil put everything here to make us question otherwise, and I, I'm just, I guess I'm a broader. You know, and I even want to say along that line, as, as a scientist, admittedly so, who uh, is very strongly at least agnostic, after the way I grew up and everything, um, that as a scientist and the objectivity that I alluded to earlier, because of all of that, and because of the lack of data and the lack of, uh, and the understanding and the realization that we don't know everything, that at this point we certainly can't know everything, that I can't sit here and even say that I'm an atheist, you know, and that there is no God and that, you know, stamp it done and send it on down the line right. Right. Um, because we don't know everything. And, you know, who knows, you know, if the universe is expanding, what's it expanding into? You know, right. Just for a simple little thing right. to throw out. So, I mean, uh, so... That's something that, that the, the whole creationist side of the argument also doesn't realize about the scientists that are looking at this thing as well, is that they even, many of them, most of them at least, you know, still even have that acknowledgement that they can't even say that we know everything and can't say that, oh, we've disproven the existence of God and all of this stuff, but yet the other side of the argument acts like that's our agenda. Right. And, and I've actually been attacked before and, and been accused of using it as, as religion and that kind of thing. The science science is, as religion. You hear religion. about science as religion or evolutionism. Yeah. Uh, as, well, as that's religion the Richard Dawkins kind of argument. Thing. Hook yeah. yourself up to the e-meter. I'm telling you. All but your to, problems will go away. To me, religion goes back to worship. You know, and there's got to be some kind of uh, uh, a, a deity there, a higher intelligence, something. There's something there in any kind of religion. There's always some kind of worship going on. Well, it's this higher yeah. order that you, you know, you're helpless and you give it up to it and et cetera. Exactly. Yeah, Whatever form you see that as, yeah. or however you choose to engage with that right. higher thing, 
Right. Um, but in science, it's, it, it isn't a worship thing. It's, it's like I said before, it's finding, what is, finding what we can find. Right. And that's all it is. What does the data show us? What yeah. does it look like? You know, and it, the interesting thing, and I'm not a scientist, certainly, but the quantum mechanics and those kinds of things are so interesting in terms of we don't understand so much. How, how you can look at, at a some kind of piece of energy and it's it's not there, but when you turn away, it's there and it's measurable. It's like, whoa, you know, or, you, or something moves here and something clear across the world moves exactly the same. You're like, wait a second, how, how does that happen? That's my experience every time I walk into like the sharper image. <laughs> God, look at that globe. Yeah, it, I mean, it's just weird how all that, and there's so much we don't know. I don't, I, maybe we call them fundamentalists. And I, I don't know, I don't get them. And unfortunately, I think in politics today, a lot of the right, the, the Republican Party has been hijacked by a lot of those folks. And oh, so, absolutely. So yeah. then guys like well, me who are fairly conservative, then you get lumped in with, you know, yeah, right. like, wait a second, nobody, I'm not arguing for some stupid sticker on a textbook. Come on. I mean, that's yeah. just some weird well, fringe that's, or, you know, that's, I mean, we come, you know, coming from the Midwest, you know, some of our darkest days was, well, it's happened twice now, where a crazy uh, school board in Kansas has, you know, basically said evolution will not be taught in the schools. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know. man. If you're teaching science, teach science. If you're teaching religion, teach religion. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. Okay, so intelligent design then, because that's the answer. What is intelligent design? Intelligent I mean, design is, is, is creation, yeah. creationism in scientific clothing, and that's all it is. And there's even a, a little allusion to it in there about a watchmaker. So a watch explain maker, and their argument, thing. right? So the argument is, is that, let's say it all started with the Big Bang, and the idea is that, all right, it started with the Big Bang, but in order to get that far, something or somebody made that happen. Is that... Yeah, it's not even so much that as much as it is looking at the complexity that currently exists. They always like to use the example of the human eye because it's so perfected and works so well. Uh, they always choose to ignore the four to six or at least or so other times that the eye has evolved in other phyla uh, besides, uh, you know, vertebrates. Um, and they, they say that, you know, they, and they, they argue from the point that the eye is so perfect that it had to have had a, uh, an intelligent designer to create it in the first place. And they even say that there's no intermediate form. And so again, that's an example of how it was designed so, the way it could be. no is. intermediate form. But I there see. are intermediate right. forms, they just choose to ignore them. Right. <laughs> see, because I could make the argument that says, all right, in, I, I would argue that maybe something set off the Big Bang in the first place, right? Or whatever it is. But then that is done in such a way that that's, it's the world's job to figure itself out and to grow and change and that's what the billions of years are for and that's what the next <laughs> billions of years are for and woohoo, have at it, you know? Yeah. And that's okay. And, and so to say, well, the eye was like this and it's only been like this, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's yeah, crazy. and there's quite a bit of evidence even that actually squid eyes are better than ours. So, you know. Why and yet, where is the giant squid today? <laughs> I asked Or at you. least the intelligent squid. Intelligent. <laughs> intelligent squid. Uh, last time I saw them, they were on my sushi. So, we <laughs> well, those weren't the intelligent ones. Now those were the that, dumb ones. That's evidence yeah. of intelligent design. <laughs> sushi. <laughs> Calamari. Uh, so, the little tentacles are all chewy. So, Jamie, you're one of those. Like, for your kids, what do you yeah. want them taught? Uh, well, I don't want them reading uh, Life and How to Get Here by... Uh, that particular group. I, what I try to do in my house, I don't know how you guys do it in your house, is to tell my girls that you have to look at the world and make your own decisions about things. But that science, and being kind of a technical guy, we tend to put a lot of faith in that. To me, that helps support your faith. And, and so insofar as it's supporting your faith, that's the way that we tend to look at it. So I don't look at it and say, well, when they tell you you started out as a squid, close your eyes and say, we don't believe that way. And that's crazy. And we know uh, Jehovah Witnesses, you can't give blood to each other, right? Because if you give blood... Really? I hadn't heard that. Yeah, if you give blood, because you're the pure race and stuff, and so if you give like blood or you take transfusions for somebody else, wow. that's bad and you'll become impure and you'll like die. And, and so you go to hell or whatever. So, and, and we have had friends that have, you know, had that kind of issue come up. And I tell the girls, I say, you know what? That's just stupid. <laughs> That's just crazy. You know, don't, don't be yeah. dumb. Just use your head. Just think. 
Well, that's the key. We've got to arm our children with critical thinking skills. Yes. Right. That's what and, I'm you know, people have asked me before, am I going to allow my son to go to church if he wants to right. or whatever? My son can go explore anything intellectually that he wants to, and I will hope that I have armed him with the skills he needs Just to, think. to think through it. Yeah. Yeah. Just think. If he comes to a different conclusion than I do, then so be it. It might be kind of tough for me to accept, but I'm certainly not going to, you know, kick him out of the family or anything else, you know. <laughs> Yet. Yeah, I can say that now. It's pretty well, easy. Yeah, to yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're still dressing him up like a piece of fruit for Halloween. He's not going to be a piece of fruit for Halloween. That's right. He's going to be a handgun. <laughs> um, that, I mean, that really gets to the crux of the point, and that's the thing that I sit, I'm sitting over here chewing on is, First of all, if I were in the shoes of a school board that had to balance all the needs of these different belief systems, first of all, I'm so the wrong guy to be balancing those kinds of beliefs. But, but uh, you know, where would I draw the line? I would want to think that I could come down and say this is a, you know, this is religious class, this is science class, and and neither the twain shall meet. Uh, but at the same time, not that easy. you know, my, my daughter came in last night, she's five years old, she comes in, I'm working, and she she has a little doll that sits on my desk, she said, this, this, this doll is looking down at you, uh, it, it's like God looking down on you. I said, hey, why is God looking down on me? Like, what did I do? You know, I mean, that's the first thing I think about. It. It's like, what, what are we doing to arm, to arm our children? But at the same, same time, I don't things? think there's anything wrong with me. I mean... You know. Yeah, I mean, but it's like a different kind of faith. Yeah. Faith that we were all put here 4,000 years ago right. is different than faith in the, the energy that binds us all as humans. Yeah. You know, faith is, is, I agree. is, is faith in the, in the fact that for good or ill, you know, we'll keep moving forward, right. you know? No, it's funny. My kids were at vacation Bible school the other day. They came home and they had had ice cream or something. They had cherry on the top. I'm like, hey, that's really cool. They said, well, it was supposed to represent Jesus's heart. I said, why do you eat Jesus's heart for? Come on, you know, it tastes good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> what if you would have been a leg and you'd eaten his leg? How would he be walking around? That's the old. Oh, but the uh, Catholics do that. <laughs> Bono is playing a concert in Ireland, right? And he's with a bunch of big Irish audience, and he silence everyone, claps his hands, right? He says. Every time I clap my hands, a child in Africa dies. Somebody cries out in the audience, Then stop clapping your hands, you asshole! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody check him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. That's great. That's great. I don't know that we've gotten anywhere on this argument, but we so. sure have uh, spun away another hour here uh, with Beer 30. Uh, thanks, special, special thanks to the Ram Brewery for letting us come in and hijack the uh, table in the corner by the pool table. Special Coconut thanks shrimp. to... Uh, oh, it's oh, so good. God, it's, it is. It's like Christmas. Uh, thanks to Phil for coming and hanging out <laughs> with us again. It's a special again. Christmas tree in my house. Well, I said coconut shrimp Happy to be. It is. It is. <laughs> well, it's a good thing because yeah. I know you guys don't eat meat, so we're like, woohoo! So we, yeah, <laughs> we get the lettuce wraps <laughs> and That's the right. two <laughs> Uh, it's good to see you guys again. I'm glad we could uh, finally yes, get definitely. together. And uh, where can we get your book if we want to pick it up? For? <laughs> it's available on Amazon.com. <laughs> J.K. Rowling has written the forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Everybody go out, uh, see Harry Potter, read Harry Potter, buy an iPhone, see The Simpsons, what else? Yeah. and have a beer. At the Ram. Anything else? With that, we're out.